We are live. We are just like, you know, I don't think anybody's on yet, but we are live. So we're going to wait for people to hop on board. This is spontaneous without an announcement that we're going live. So we're just in a chicken, not coop right now, but where are we? Coop's good. Coop's good. And on a poultry farm, which is what, um, that's where we're at, right? Uh, where do we fear avian influenza or not? Not as much as a normal person or poultry farm. We, All right. don't, we don't fear it as much. Well, we're going to get into that. This is Sean from Greener Pastures here in Elgin, Texas. And why am I here? Well, I actually found him through Elisa from Fond because I have been vetting and looking at this brand for months now and trying it with some really interesting creations and new recipes. I made a bone broth on my YouTube channel yesterday. Um, so if you haven't subscribed or hit the notification bell on there, go do that because that um, recipe dropped as well as other really cool recipes coming out. Um, I know we're going to make one today with mm -hmm. maybe like a poached egg or something, but yeah. this, I, and I don't consume anybody else's bone broth um, for the reasons because it's just really diluted with not great water. Or, Sometimes you know, it's rehydrated powder, so you have to be really careful. Yeah, exactly. And so it's very rare that I have anybody else's. Um, bone broth, but just, you know, again, we've been t chatting for months and months on end. And so then, uh, so this is their chicken broth. And so I'm like, well, let's go visit the farm <laughs> where you get your source, your chicken bones from to make this amazing nourishing bone broth. You guys, let me just tell you what's in it. Water, chicken bones and sea salt. That's it. That's what I love and quality ingredients nonetheless. And so the first ingredient on here. The chicken bones, which is where we're at. So I am here, Greener Pastures, because I wanted to see the chicken farm and the poultry farm. So tell us about Greener Pastures. Yeah, we're a pasture-raised uh, poultry operation. So what we'll do is uh, we get chicks at day of age, and then we grow them out in the pasture like you're seeing right now behind us. Just got about a 1,000 chickens in here, and they're just grazing on grass, hanging out in the good weather that we're experiencing here in Central Texas. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is this is in a, a mobile range coop, so this thing actually moves over the ground. The birds don't actually go outside of this coop because just in danger of predators, hawks, things of that nature. Um, so what we'll actually do is we'll attach a tractor to this house and we'll move it daily so they're on new fresh piece of pasture where there's new bugs to eat, there's new grasses to graze on, and just new things that chickens like to do, you know. We just... We like to grow our, our chickens in a very humane way mm -hmm. and just like them to exhibit natural behaviors because that results in a, a stress-free stress chicken that uh, in the end probably tastes a lot better. Yeah, not every model is the same. So, you know, some chicken farms are, are a little bit different. But, um, yeah, I just really enjoy this because it's kind of like a hybrid of, you know, pecking on grass and bugs and, you know, being outdoors and moving, you know, from, I guess, daily, right? You mm -hmm. move this... Um, this sort of barn uh, just spot to, to spot, spot to so, spot, which is great. So not only are the birds able to graze on the grass and get nourishment from the field, but the birds are actually nourishing the field itself with their mm -hmm. manure. So it's a really good combination and a, a, a good synergy between the birds and the land because they're regenerating the soil, mm -hmm. regenerating our, our pasture land, so that way when the next batch of birds comes over that piece of pasture, it's got new better, more vigorous growth of grass. So we're just really regenerative in everything we do, trying to promote a better, healthier ecosystem. And for really the, the difference between regenerative and organic. Now you guys are the only regenerative organic certified farm here in the U.S. and mm -hmm. in the world. They're silver, which means even their feed, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is verified regenerative as well. And an easy way to think about regenerative versus organic is organic is we really care about the inputs. Like, what are we spraying on the bird? But right. regenerative is what's going back to the land. And right. so just like Sean talked about, being able to have a product that invests in future flocks, making this product continually possible, is really important for Fond so that we know we're a part of a process that we believe in and supporting a rancher that we want to be Right. Around. Yeah, and I love that, just the intentionality between each of these individuals, too, just to, you know, come out with, like, such a product that there's, like, hardworking and very intentional 
individuals behind the process is really something also too that like I love and I look for because my whole message um, is just know your producer right and, and know your farmer know your rancher know your cowboy know who's making your food um, because that is what's really important for our health um, and for those of you that are just popping on we are in Elgin Texas at greener pastures where um, the chicken bones and carcasses and more particularly the feet um, are put into making Fawn's beautiful, delicious um, bone broth. Uh, this is chicken bone broth. It's absolutely amazing and it's stunning. Um, and just so you know, if you guys engage and ask questions, the more you do, you get entered into a, a contest, I guess, to win a bon or, or a Fawn bone yeah. broth. Four pack of Fawn. Four yeah. pack. So engage and then we'll pick one lucky winner to get this chicken broth um also we had a question on there do you guys are you at lake line is it lake line or lake view uh, farmers market lake line. both hmm. of you guys um no i don't think we're doing many of the farmers markets i think we are uh in a, a couple of butcher shops i think we do a, a good amount of direct to consumer Okay. I can't speak on it too much because I'm just the farmer. Yeah. I, I focus on just growing the birds. Just the farmer. He's a very important person. So not, not as much as salesman. We have yeah. a really good one of those. But yeah. But I if just... you go to greenerpastures.com, is that right? That's okay. Correct. You can probably um, navigate your way or you know reach out to them to see exactly where they're at. I'm sure you guys have greener pastures on Instagram too yep. as well. That's correct. Amazing. Um, and then you know you can also reach out to Fond. Go ahead and follow Fond. Um, this broth amazing gonna show you again one lucky winner are your chickens happy and how can you tell these every are some day. good questions every day so, well you guys check on them how often five to six times a day so we've got we've got team members in here all day making sure they've got adequate feed adequate water access good ventilation meaning our open-sided curtains are open enough so they can get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, our primary focus is just treating them in a humane way. So mm -hmm. we're not focused on growing the chicken as fast as possible. We're making sure that the time that it did grow, it experienced the best life it could. So um, I don't have a, a meter that judges happiness, but I do know whenever I look at a chicken in a pasture like this, it makes me happy. Yeah. So I'm assuming that they're happy as well. Yeah. So we're, we're in a covered you know, we're in a coop. That's important in Texas because they can get pretty hot here. Oh, yeah. We are standing on an embarrassment of riches, but maybe talk mm -hmm. to us as far as these, this grass, but maybe talk to us a little bit about the internal body temperature of a chicken and why you guys like to supplement with super nutrient-dense feed as well as foraging. Yeah, so really hot-bodied animals are like 105 degrees, so they're just like little space heaters. Um, so... As a result, in the summer, Texas heat, you know, 110. Last, I mean, last summer we had 90 days, no rain, and it was just 100 degrees every day. It was like record after record uh, that we were breaking in terms of heat. So we add some ventilation fans that we can keep air movement over there, keep them cool. And we'll add some foggers on them, add some moisture to the environment. That way it's kind of acts as a, a miniature air conditioning in here. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be 110 degrees outside. And then in here, it could be 85, 90, less than 110. Um, and the, the birds are still hot, yeah, but they're not really, really hot. You're so. not losing flocks due to heat exhaustion, which is really yes, common yes. and conventional. And, and that's part of happiness, too. And so our, bird, be happy. Yeah. our birds are just more hardy, right? They're not very susceptible to dying over little changes in temperature or little diseases that come around. They're, they're just more hardy. They're, you know, they're foraging the land. They're exercising every day. They're doing natural chicken behaviors. That way, one little variation in temperature or uh, one uh, cold spell doesn't come through and just wipe everything out. They're, mm -hmm. just, they're just normal birds, not a factory farm. Also, right. what are you guys doing in the first days of life to keep that immune system functioning versus other operations where it's like tanked 40%? Think about the ammonia. Oh, yeah. The feed. The, yeah. The, um, so we... What's that called? The bedding. Oh, the mm -hmm. bedding, yeah. So we focus a lot, before we, the, ch the chicks even arrive, we do a lot of preparation. So our sections, our houses, we clean them very extensively, make sure there's no you know, uh, microbial load in the house. After, uh, after that, we'll uh, remove any uh, dirty litter that was in that section, and then we'll add some, some new ones to it. And then um, we'll, we'll heat the section up, 
and then every single day we'll take tests of uh, ammonia strip test where we're testing the air quality in the environment making sure it's not exceeding a 10 parts per million which 10 parts per million um, is barely recognizable to the human nose yeah, we can start smelling it then mm -hmm. but to a chicken and when it's breathing that in every single day can harm their immune system so mm. uh, we're just focusing on you know making sure we're minimizing any sort of negative impact on the environment yeah and so speaking of immune system too i think like the resiliency factor especially when it comes to, uh, to this you know avian influenza that we're dealing with is a lot of it having to do more so with the process um, and also these, you know, uh, feed or what do you call them? Uh have tons of you know chickens on chickens and just like sure. really hot and close confinement like together uh, farming and so that's where you know and they don't really care about their immune systems. No, it's systems. how cheap, how fast. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's the how cheap, how fast. Right, so we're not really, like, it doesn't seem like the avian flu is something that you worry about. Yeah, I mean, disease is a disease. It's going to yeah. travel around and it's going to do her thing. But mm -hmm. if you just think about sunlight and just the bird, the, the spot that we're going to move these birds on tomorrow has been in the sun all day. It's mm -hmm. been photos, the grass has been photosynthesizing. The sun kills a lot of things. Um, so, and it's back to the immune system, immune system that we built in the birds. Mm -hmm. These birds are out in nature where there's thousands and thousands and millions of bacteria everywhere. So they're being exposed to this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And then and you know, back to a, a confinement operation it's where, you know, it's a, it's a hot, moist um, environment where it kind Perfect of acts, for bacteria. Yeah, it acts as a petri mm -hmm. dish. It's bacteria just spawns and regrows and then and then you go to the stocking density of those farms where if one bird gets it the next bird right next to it gets it and then it's mm -hmm. just a chain uh, a chain link effect where every bird in the barn now yeah. has it and um it's kind of like humans you know you ever yeah. especially yeah. when you're traveling you're in yeah. this confined recycled airspace and you know you wonder why you get sick yeah. it's the same you know things and if you don't have a really robust immune system you know it's going to take you down more so than the, the person that does have a really strong immune system so for those of you guys just joining us we are in elgin texas at greener pastures you can visit their website greenerpastures.com and also um, their instagram they have one but we are with alisa from okay. fawn as well where she sources her amazing chicken bones from so that's why i was like i want to go direct to the source where do you guys source you know your bones and your ingredients from and so this is the farm we're at if um participate if you want to participate in this giveaway we're giving away a four pack of chicken broth um to you so engage and ask questions and we'll pick one lucky winner i know one question on there was how do you move the coop without running over the chicken yes. which yes. is what i was thinking about yes. earlier yes. today so very have, practical i like your thinking yeah we <laughs> have one of the best teams i've ever worked with here just some people that really really care about how we raise our birds they're really well trained these people really didn't have any experience with chickens uh, before they started working here so we started from ground zero taught them no how retraining we, yeah no retraining we taught them how we want to grow birds so in the process of actually moving them we've got one tractor who hooks up to the front end of the house mm -hmm. and then and we've it's not going 20 miles an hour. oh no we're going less than a half yeah like we're not even going a mile per hour it's going very slow so we've got one trained member on the tractor and we've got another trained member inside the house uh, with a herding stick that we call um, and they're herding them forward, making sure the, uh, the birds don't reach the back end of the house. So it's kind of an art form, uh, learning how to herd chickens, because they don't always like to listen to you. Right? They have a mind of their own, they're animals, right? So, um, but we can move these houses in you know, 15 to 30 minutes every, every day. Mm -hmm. So. There was another question on there too about like, what does the um, color of the egg yolk have to do with you know, the quality of the egg? So the... Um, the viscosity as well as the hold on let me ask, let me read that question direct so i'm answering it pro properly um what does the color and viscosity of the egg yolk say about the quality and the nutrients so i know according to just you know some of my um sources from what i've gathered as well is just that forage you know depending on forage or where you're at um geographic location sometimes that can change the egg yolk color 
you know, oftentimes people also put uh, marigold in their feed to get a consistent orange color. Um, however, what uh, we aren't doing eggs here because we don't have any laying hens. So that's actually a great question. Is, a great question. Yes. Um, but that is just in response to eggs. But let's transition then, I guess, into the why, what type of birds we have here, which aren't hens, laying hens. Yeah. They are meat birds. But it transitions to, mm -hmm. to meat birds as well. If you look at our, if you, if you put our, our, our processed chicken side by side to a, a normal store-bought one, um, you're going to see a, a, a darker, richer pink color. It's going to oh, be more pink. It's not going to be as white and, and uh, almost like bleached. It's going to be smaller because we don't grow them as large. Mm. Um, and then yeah. th really what stands out to me uh, over everything is the, the juiciness complex of it. I don't know the fancy word to describe <laughs> it, but all I know is whenever you take a bite of our chicken or you cook our chicken, it doesn't shrink down in, and when you cook it, it doesn't lose all that water retention. Mm -hmm, right. And so it's just a lot juicier whenever you eat it. Yeah, a lot mm. of sneaky tactics to make your store-bought chicken breasts way more so yeah. they can sell them for more. And part of that is soaking them in water mm -hmm. to get a lot of water retention. Also, there's a lot of stripping on the breasts of a chicken that's been grown too fast. It's tough, um, so you can tell a very different. But when I was at the farmer's market making this product for the first time, I had to learn... There's a difference between a laying hen yeah. and a meat hen, right? oh, yeah. a, bro a broiler chicken. And there are some heritage birds that can do both, mm -hmm. but these are meat hens. And so meat chickens, sorry, mm -hmm. not hens. <laughs> well, some are they, hens. They are different. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just, uh, it, it's, a, it's a little bit faster growing bird. So um, uh, a layer chicken is di or diverting all of the nutrients it's intaking into its reproductive system, which is its egg. Ours are, um, they're deferring all of their nutrients into their muscular system, so yeah. chicken meat, so. So raised for two different purposes. Right. Nice. Okay, somebody's just starting out their chicken farm in uh, New York, oh, Long yay. Island. Amazing. Good job. I know, Thank that's you. exciting. Um, so, cool. And so, that's interesting. I didn't actually realize that, that the color or the, you know, darkness or as opposed to the whiteness of, of the bird yeah. um, or of the meat, rather, is uh, translates to nutrients and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So and a lot of exercise, too. These yeah. birds are always moving, dancing around, chasing bugs and doing all that. So, mm -hmm. they've got to really act muscular system. They're yeah. also the regenerative poultry consistently tests with three times the omega threes, which mm -hmm. is really important when we're looking at that omega three, omega six ratio. Um, also, the mm -hmm. chicken meat itself um, has tested with higher levels of glutathione, so mm -hmm. that's really important yes. as well. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll have higher levels of glutathione right, if right. you eat it. Very yeah. different process there. Sure, but it's good because a healthy that means bird. It's a master mm -hmm. antioxidant. Also yeah. speaks to the avian flu. Mm -hmm. Speaks to resiliency. Exactly. Right, in yeah. Your system. So for sure, the whole the when we do better, everyone benefits from the chickens to us even being able to consume this beautiful product. We're so right. grateful that yeah. you guys do this mm -hmm. in a way. That means a more nutrient dense product so we can create a more healing product for our yeah. customers. And so, yeah, let's talk about this a little bit further. Again, for those of you that just popped on really quickly in Elgin, Texas, Greener Pastures, you can go on their website, check them out on Instagram. We are with Fond Bone Broth, Elisa from Fond Bone Broth and Sean from Greener Pastures here. We're just talking all things chicken and from, you know, essentially coop to soup. I guess uh, I just great. made that up. I don't know. Like, <laughs> just rolled off the tongue, you know. This just different environment, different inspiration. But um, anyway, so that's kind of what, what we're here. And so it, it takes like, you know, you're looking at the process here, and you know, your farmer here, as well as you know, your producer and your maker of this fine, fine chicken bone broth. And so those of you that are participating and engaging have an opportunity to win a very special prize—a four-pack of chicken broth. Um, so, and this is so yummy and so delicious, but let's move on to the, what we feed them because this was important to me too, yeah. is just yeah. like determining the omega ratios. I know my audience is very, um, interested in learning that, you know, it does have that nice balance, you know, yeah. I, I mean, ideally a situation is getting as close to one to one, but I know right. that's not right. typically the case sometimes in monogastric animals, but anyways, how, 
does that translate the omega ratio from like what is being fed here because meat birds are fed differently sometimes than laying hens or just even just per farm different farm um i know uh elisa you've seen those results in the yeah. omega ratio I mean, a lot of omega-3s like mm -hmm. in the grass and the things that they're foraging but the feed one of the reasons that we chose to partner with greener pastures um the CEO who couldn't be here for the live, he is like a, he has crafted essentially like a chef's table feed mm -hmm. for these chickens. It has organic oregano oil. So even the feed is regenerative organic. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to know. Mm -hmm. It has organic oregano oil so that it's a natural antibiotic. Mm -hmm. um, these chickens are not fed antibiotics. This is a natural antibiotic that they're able to consume. No it hormones, no antibiotics. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. it also has shellfish. So it's made, it also has oyster shells mm -hmm. in the feed. Um, oysters are highly nutrient dense. Um, but one of the reasons that I like that is it's opposed to like limestone or some other cheap form of getting, you know, calcium um, into their diet. So it's an intentional feed. It's um, one that makes for a more nutrient dense bird as well. And so that's where you can see the give and take between making sure that they have the most nourished life and the best environment to grow in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like she, she said, it's a, it's, a, it's a supplement, right? Our, our primary yeah. focus is for them to eat grass right. and bugs the feed is there because they are monogastric and they need they need certain types of protein and certain levels because they're not digesting it like a cow which is a ruminant which is digesting it four or five times so mm. they just need that that supplemental feed added and then it's like the salad bar out here with the grass yeah and you guys do feed it corn and soy too but it's like domestic mm -hmm. like corn yeah, talk and soy about just, where yeah. that's from yeah so it's a farmer uh, up in uh, iowa he does all his own stuff so he he grows the corn he grows the soybean mm -hmm. and then he harvests it and then he pellets it and and uh, mm -hmm. mills it and does all of this stuff himself and he's a really nice guy yeah um and you bought from him once and never talked to him again no, oh, we no, talk we talk to him every single day. We talk <laughs> about the weather, you know, the solar eclipse, uh, so what he saw, boys. what I saw. Oh, <laughs> your friends, yeah. yeah. That's Which what is, I love about it, yeah. Yeah, and so it just, you know, it runs deeper than just sitting there and being like, oh, you know, are these uh, chickens on, you know, just grass and bugs? Or, like, what do you feed it? And so, uh, again, like, your intention uh, behind just your communication with, you know, talking to those people who do yeah. um, give you the feed and... You know, it's opened my eyes a bit, too, because I was one, you know, that's definitely like corn and soy free, which I still, you know, do and absolutely appreciate. But, um, you know, there's there's I believe it's more of the process of how it's being made and being produced. Right. So that farm is regenerative as well too, producing these grains for your feed yeah. and to have, you know, healthy, healthy meat birds, essentially. Um, and so it does still show in test results too the in the omega ratio because you can also take um one of the omega ratios and the birds that are fed on you know no corn and no soy but on pastures are definitely lower yeah. in polyunsaturated fatty acids than ones that are from the grocery store yeah. but guess what the ones from the grocery store sure are fed corn and soy but also in confinement they're not exercising and, and the corn and soy who knows where it's coming from on antibiotics on hormones so it's interesting to see that you know just yeah. when it's really well raised like properly with all of the processes like that are done right from the feed you know to the farmer to the grass here to you know then again to the bottle it's just really it's really important it's about the process more than anything yeah. absolutely yeah Cool. So once again, we are in Elgin, Texas. One lucky winner is going to win fond bone broth. This is chicken bone broth from these little chickens, which we're going to actually translate to um, really quickly talk about their feet, because this is what's important, actually, about the bone broth. Um, yeah, he's pretty calm. Not only did we talk a little bit about, you know, the birds and how they're living here out in Texas, but let's talk about these guys and what goes in here. Clean feet. You know, clean feet, you guys. Yeah. And so what that's mm -hmm. a product of is, is the, the good litter and floor quality that we give them. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a lot of other operations, it's really, it's, they're sitting on the manure for a, a long period of time. So what happens is there's a lot of acid in that manure and it starts to burn their paws, a ring around their paws. And mm -hmm. it's something that's very painful for the bird. It, mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't enjoy ha like 
just like having a splinter in your foot. You know, it's just uncomfortable. They don't like it. So we take tests with our birds. Like every every week, we'll pick them up and we'll look at the bottom of their feet, and they're always clean. But we're just taking the we're going the extra mile, making sure we're monitoring everything, make sure nothing is ever happening to our birds. So it's really cool. I saw the entire process here too, and like they're really transparent about it. I don't know if you guys do any like farm tours or if anybody were to oh, come all the visit time. or whatever. Yeah, yeah so extremely tr transparent. Open door, which is amazing. And so I saw it, um, all the process as far as um, not live, but you know the coops and how they move and their pastures and then where they go to be processed. It's super super clean, um, and you know and then where they go to then be harvested and then essentially like you know how it sort of gets separated from you know the carcasses to these wonderful clean feet that we just talked about they're and called chicken paws chicken paws yeah. that's right i was like wow they are actually called paws and not like claws or or whatever but um which then obviously you know get put in a place where then it gets sent to yep. you know elisa's crew and then yeah so we will buy um, essentially what's left over so we will buy the chicken feet um there has been some increased demand in like the last five years for chicken feet as people are learning about the benefits of bone broth and using the whole animal which we love to see yeah I and love then it. we buy the rest and so mm -hmm. we use them in our bone broth we will also use wings and drumsticks it kind of depends on what the farmers are not able to move at that point um, and then we are predominantly using the carcasses. And so um, once you have those chicken thighs and drumsticks and wings and breasts cut out, mm -hmm. um, there's a meaty carcass that's left that is a lot of bone and cartilage. And then that is what we use in our bone broth. So we're using, mm -hmm. those are called chicken frames. Mm -hmm. You learn all these things. <laughs> and so uh, we're using the chicken frames, the chicken feet, the wings, and the drumsticks in our bone broth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where it's at, like nose to tail. Like the feet are the some of the most nourishing, you know, yes. parts of the animal, which is great, and which is what Elisa uses in her chicken bone broth here from um, the farm over here at Greener Pastures in Elgin, Texas. And yeah, I mean, I absolutely love this. I love that I came out here to yes, visit the farm. Coming. No, of yeah, course. Awesome. Like, I love. It's always a humbling experience to see. Yeah. Like where your food comes from and right. how much work it takes to get it. Don't waste your meat. If you I know. Buy meat, eat it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if those of you, which I'm talking to most everybody in America that are eating chicken breast alone, and hopefully it's from high quality, good places like Greener Pasture. Um, you're going to want this chicken broth because this is going to be the parts and the bits and the gelatinous and the collagen and all the things that you are missing out on when you are eating chicken breast. So, I mean, I do encourage you to buy the whole bird and cook the whole bird, maybe make your own bone broth, but I definitely love, you know, also having convenient options that are of higher quality where I don't feel like I have to make it all the time. Like you make it easy for me mm -hmm. and yeah and, and like and also like light on the brain too because i'm like and it's quality yeah. yes you know yeah. so mm -hmm. i'm and really thank you, excited greener pastures for yeah making it possible I know. Yeah. thank yeah. you guys right in cool. our backyard yep so somebody's going to win this i will dm you soon we're gonna look through the comments and if fond who's on there is it leslie or Kendall. I don't know. Or we'll Kendall. We'll do, Give us a thumbs up if you picked a winner, maybe, because I don't want to close this out without seeing who, who did it. Maybe Elise is going to do it. Maybe. Otherwise, is there any other comments? Let me see if there's one more question to see if we can we find a winner. Do you guys do mail away? I'm in Florida. Yes. We, so you guys do sell there. Yeah. Yes. Greener Pastures, go. And then also Fond. They delivered to Florida mm -hmm. because guess what? You're sending some over to my mom in Florida because I'm going to be there next week and we're going to share some bone broth. We got some cool recipes coming up. So go to Fond, they're deliver, they deliver in Florida. Greener Pastures, they deliver in Florida. Um, what else do we have? People say mm -hmm. hi, hello from Argentina. Wants the chicken broth, yes right here this is fun so proud of you guys somebody's proud of us <laughs> uh, people are waving high internationally too and i'm like sorry we can't get this stuff to you but maybe if i'm invited over there i'll smuggle it in <laughs> um anyways are, is there anything else left to say or how, or i can pick a winner too okay uh, guys Kendall's on. she gave us a thumbs up so she's gonna she's got a winner it. Ooh! all right you guys thank you so much for joining don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel hit the notification bell too because we've got some really cool recipes coming out um with fond and with chicken and with all of that so we're really excited and um 
I will also put this live on my YouTube channel. So if you guys comment down below on my YouTube channel, maybe you get a chance to enter to win, um, yeah. right? Yeah, and on if, YouTube as well. Yeah, and sure. if you have more questions, you guys can kind of ask those questions there, and hopefully um, we'll, we'll kind of get in there and keep yeah. answering. Yep. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thanks, yeah. Bye bye.